Well, Slaunch and how you do, Buckaroos, and how the heck are you? Well, we're back at the pub after a little bit of a break. Uh, my schedule hadn't allowed me to do the regular shows, so I'm trying to get back to doing it. I was trying to decide uh, if I should do it regularly Wednesday or, or, or Sunday. Right now, I'm going with Wednesday. And joining me at the pub for episode 39 is the one and only Rod J from Rod J Beer Ventures. But I also know you've got some other irons in the fire, Rod. So tell folks what else you got going on. Oh, cheers, my friend. Yeah, so um, trying to stay active on a lot of stuff that I'm doing around the beer world, of course. So we've got the beer channel, Raj Beer Ventures, over on YouTube. Uh, the website, which you can see the website there in the uh, title, RajBeerVentures.com. But um, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff happening. Uh, Thursday nights, we do the happy hour live stream, where it's myself, Todd. We have Mal that's actually in from um, Chicago. She actually is part of Ravinia Brewing now. But before that, she kind of gives us that that more female side that we were missing for all those years. So it was always great to have more women involved in the beer community. So so was able to have her join this year to be a part of that. Um, always doing stuff. I just started doing more stuff like on TikTok after going to a conference last year. Everybody was talking about it. And amazingly, it is pretty cool on TikTok with some of the things doing. So you can catch me there. Catch me on um Twitter, Facebook, um, Tumblr, you know, everything except MySpace, pretty much. I'm everywhere for the most part. So the podcast has been picking up, too. So anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can now find Rod J. Beer Ventures. Spotify has been running a lot of stuff out. I've been using going through Anchor, and they get it all shared out to where you can get it on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Oh, nice. Very nice. So we feature sometimes the replays of some of the YouTube shows. I'll put some special things on there as well. I'll probably put like this up there on the podcast so people can hear and learn about Tom some more here, the Beer Whisperer, and doing everything I can. Anything about beer, I'm trying to be involved and be around. And we've had some great early shows this year. We had Left Hand on, which was great. Their head brewer came on. And we've had a few other people from the industry. So looking to do more of that this year. Well, that's great. Uh, real quick, I want to mention we've had a couple comments from Tater, Dom, and Todd. Uh, they yeah. say cheers. Uh, so wh what are you drinking, man? What, what are you drinking at the pub today, sir? So I actually picked up a six-pack today, one that I thought I did have it one time before, but it looks like I had it at a restaurant. And I looked on, I said, you know, I never reviewed it, so I'll probably be reviewing this on the channel at a point, too. But I picked up a six-pack of Flying Dog and their Double Dog oh, wow. IPA. Comes in at 12% ABV. Oh, wow. Gosh, I haven't had that one for years. We used to be able to get their stuff here, but I can't anymore. Yeah. So I just recently did the Double Dog 18. Oh, my their, goodness. Their triple IPA, the 18% ABV. Oh, good Lord. Like, I, I did that. I did that jump like Christmas story. I went to the Triple Dog there without doing the Double Dog first. <laughs> I had to go back now and try Very the Double nice. Dogs. There. Nice. Yeah. So, but I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to definitely be drinking that and uh, put it in my little snifter glass here. I'll let you pour that, and I'll tell you what I got here. I got one I picked up, uh, gosh, uh, uh, two months ago, so I really need to drink it. Uh, it's a gluten-free beer. It's from uh -huh. Brewing out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's called Astronaut Cookies Oatmeal Stout. And it's really interesting. The ingredients are millet, rice, buckwheat, quinoa, gluten-free oats, tapioca, maltodextrin, hops, yeast, and water. Okay, it's very interesting. It's not bad. It, it's probably the the best gluten free beer I've ever had. I was gonna say, what is your take on gluten free beers? There. Well, to be honest with you, I really haven't until this one. I really haven't found one I really liked, but this one has done exquisitely well. Okay. And we talked about pairings before the show, and I said, well, a lot of it's about my my uh, OCD. I will, you know, so I was going to have a beer, and you said well, you might do some whiskey too. So I grabbed a beer and a whiskey. So, yeah. so the, the common thread here really is Oklahoma. So I got the Oklahoma beer, and I've got an Oklahoma whiskey. This one's from Hochatown Distilling out of Oklahoma, and it's a single barrel straight bourbon whiskey at 120 proof. It's a single barrel cask. Oh, nice. And it, it is just delicious and remarkably approachable at that uh, ABV or at that proof, I should say. Oh, God. I and actually I want a, a two ounce pour there. Keep it light. <laughs> I actually went a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm actually over there with the out west, though, but I went a little bit more south. So skip over Texas, but I got the Sierra Nort Mexican whiskey. Oh wow! I had that one before. So, oh, yeah, this was the find at one of my local spots here in Baltimore. Now, 
Uh, it's 45 ABV, uh, barrel number 118, bottle number 198, batch number three. It's a 90 Eight. proof. Yeah, 90 proof. Wow. Uh, think single barrel Mexican whiskey made with native Oxycam white corn. I probably screwed that up, but that's what they got there. Oh. Uh, but this was one that was uh, in the store. And I was like looking at it. I was like, I've never seen that before. I was kind of thinking about it. And the guy was like, oh, I got a bottle here. You want to taste it? I'm like, who's going to say no? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a little taste, right? So um, what's up, Yoda? Cheers, my friend. So, so Vanessa uh, said hi. And then uh, Erie Nicole Gaming says, hey there. Hey, hey, what's happening, folks? Cheers. Erie's part of our custom fuss crew. Very nice. So tell me about the, t- tell me about the, the, the nose on that whiskey. So this one here. I'm really curious with the way you were describing it there. I mean, you get like with my whiskey, even though I lived in Kentucky for a number of years, I didn't drink enough whiskey to become a connoisseur of it, but you're getting Mm -hmm. definitely like the alcohol type feel coming through. You're getting some graininess, you're getting the corn. I mean, it's it's it almost feels like one of those pure type things where you have alcohol. You just like, no, it's just like, <laughs> like it says on here, no color or anything. Add like you could tell like no additives. Like this is like the oh, that's, real nice. deal. that's very nice. That yeah. sounds delicious. I'm going to look for that now that you, which is like when you go to Mexico, like we went to Cancun years ago, stuff that we get in America, you can't get over there. Like mm-hmm. they don't serve some of this stuff. And it's like, you know, they're conscious about what they're putting in their bodies. And same thing mm-hmm. happened with Canada. Same thing that we go to the Caribbean. So it's like, what are they feeding us here, right? So I know <laughs> it's really bothersome, isn't it? <laughs> you start to have concerns when you come back. So this one is, and I'll show this here. This is their uh, white version. There's a yellow, a white, a black, and a purple. And these are the whiskey advocate ratings. Oh wow! Okay, very so, nice. Which I can't say whiskey advocate is that much better than beer, like untapped or anything like that. But they give the white uh, an eighty-six. The yellow a ninety, the black eighty eight, and the purple eighty five. So, okay, not oh, last, nice but number. Not last there, but um, they put off here like non GMO and all this other kind of stuff. But uh, one here says white has the most familiar corn whiskey character of the Mexican trio: sweet butter corn, toasted spices, green corn husks. And peanuts on the nose, palate is sweet, gentle, and refreshing. Uh, and everything else kind of small. It's like, because we were talking about getting older, I was like, everything's so small print now. I like, know, it's real killing me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't read. I can get, get, they, they put a certain print on a certain color background. I say, like, hell, I can't read that. <laughs> but I can tell you, I have tasted it as I'm just about halfway through the bottle here now. Very and nice. Get the color on it. Oh, you got a, I'm guessing that looks like about a three ounce pour to me. Uh, it's all session, session drinks for me. So I don't know. <laughs> I got, I'm not judging. I just, you know, I've been pouring into a Glen Karen so long, I can eyeball it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know did that's do the, I did do the, prop, the proper glass for the, um, the double IP, right? A snifter. So I put oh, that nice. Yeah, I used yeah. a snifter for my, my oatmeal stat too, as well. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a comment from Mersey Beer says, Cheers all. And then cheers, Vanessa Adam. is mm-hmm. back with a. Uh, I have a caramel pecan coffee whiskey. Oh man, that sounds yeah. delicious. Ooh, that does taste delicious. Sound delicious, Vanessa. We might have to talk about that one. Give us some notes on that. Yeah, so when you get it into like the Glen Karen, it definitely opens up more in the nose. Which again, that's one of those things where glass matter. I don't you're not getting all this by sniffing out of the bottle. When you get into the glass and it runs it up, yeah. it really does come out. Almost like in the back, it has a little bit of a. You always try to think of things that you can relate to, right? It almost has like a, like a like a lighter fluid type feel in the nose, which is kind of weird, like a kerosene type feel. Kerosene, okay. Yeah, at least for me, that's what I'm kind of getting there. But almost like a little bit of an oily type feel in the nose. I mean, it's it's a pretty solid one, and yeah. like I said, and I think when I got this bottle, it was. 29 31 or something like that so it wasn't a highly priced type thing so it was well worth it and i love the the caramel brown color of it too so yeah the color looks amazing man i like it and you talk about 
you know, when you do some of the bourbon whiskey, sometimes you get that bite up front. This is smooth. Smooth mm -hmm. going in. Then someone's like, oh, who turned the heat on? Because the heat starts you, coming you in. The the back in. <laughs> yeah. You get that little heat coming up. You get a little bit of a caramel type feel mm -hmm. there on the palate. But it just lays down very nicely. That be any finishing spice there? Any, anything on the back end? Any little spice? A bit, little bit towards a rye type appeal to it, I would say, on the back end. A little bit of a spice type on the back end. Like a baking spice kind of thing? No, just like kind of that 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 rye spice that you get on some of the rye barrel and type with beer, okay. where it's got a little bit of that little bit pepperish type thing. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's I mean it just saturates the mouth ever so nicely too. Nice. So yeah, it was a pleasant surprise to pick up. Yeah, this one really surprised me too. At one twenty proof, it's it's just a. Oh, and I, you know, if you, you would think you'd want to mix it or add water to it, but it's just so approachable. Neat. And I just hate to do anything else to it. So Hotepan Distilling was formed in the heart of southeast Oklahoma with the goal of producing the finest quality spirits distilled, bottled in Asia, Hotepan. This stuff is just amazing, man. You would think and you'd get a burn, but you really don't. It, it's initially sweet up front. Mm-hmm. You get some some toffee like notes. I almost feel like I get a hint of amaretto in there. Uh, you feel some brown sugar because you're definitely going to find some molasses. Um, you may find some dark fruits. You kind of alluded to it earlier. I, I always tell people that's between you and your palate, right? Because mm -hmm. you're you're not going to taste things you don't know. So you you may pick up some date and or fig if if you're familiar with those flavors. Uh, for me, I'm picking up some dark cherry notes. But a lot of big spice in the finish. And, and I don't know if you can see me or not or see the expression on my face. But typically, one might drink 120 proof and make a face. But this thing is just so easy to drink. <laughs> Going down with no problem. There's just nothing. Um, you know, no, none of that. You know. <laughs> I, will just, say on the, yeah. I will say on the lips, as I drink on this now, I do get like talking about the spice, almost like a cinnamon type appeal to it as well. Then I'll pick it oh, up nice. on the back end. So, so very we had complex, very complex. A yeah. comment from Crutch says you're switching it up. Great to see expanding your palate. I'll post <laughs> you. Comment <laughs> from Vanessa about her whiskeys. Yeah, put that up there. I, I welcome all questions and comments. I, I tell folks when I do these shows, we'll answer just about anything, unless you're being a colossal deuce bag, and then I'm going to ignore you. <laughs> yeah, Crunch um, was one of the uh, original. We were going back way back in. I think you might have been on a couple of shows of Crunch. We were doing the old. Uh, oh, boy, it's been a while. I haven't been on. Beers, craft beers going wild years ago. So, yeah. I'm working till nine most Thursdays, so it's uh, my Thursdays are, are pretty much taken up these days. Yeah, but I, but I gave up my day gig, or you know, I, I day gig. I gave up what was the main job and just focusing on what was the side gig, which is working at the brewery now and picking up more more shifts, kind of re, you know reinventing myself in my old age. Yeah, well, not bad, not a bad one spot to be at, especially for beer drinkers, right? To be at the brewery, so. Well, no, and it's a great one, too. It's more like, it, it, it's kind of like a throwback, right? That pre-prohibition neighborhood brewery kind of feel, you know? We're kind of mm. tucked in a neighborhood, a little strip mall, and we just have a lot of locals that will come to us. Yeah. And we don't, the, the, the place has no television set, so it's about, you know, it's about making oh. friends, it's about talking to people. So folks that want to see a game, they're going other places, but if you want to come in and have some great beer, we even just started bringing in some whiskey selections, but, you know, a lot of, you just make good friends in that place. Okay. It's a little more more about building community. Mm -hmm. Putting your head, you know, exactly. in front of a big screen. So that's pretty cool. I didn't mention it earlier. A lot of lot of big oak in the finish here. Finish is rather dry and spicy. Very nice. Uh, so what you would have, other good. than that, you've got a lot of irons in the fire, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show. So are you directing your focus any one place, or are you just trying to divide it up evenly? We always try, don't we? <laughs> I get it, right? Yeah, I, I get yeah, it. Yeah, you know, I was talking about the beer stuff. So. 
I've tried to do so. Actually, this week I've kind of taken off this week just to kind of regroup a little bit outside of like having the live stream on Thursday night. The video uploads last week. I kind of I put up a video talking about SRM because I'm getting more into an educational concept back on the channel as well. Um, so I'm going to have more of that stuff coming out. Beer reviews. I enjoy doing them, but I feel like everybody's doing beer reviews, right? And it's kind of like. I wanted I wanted to bring more stuff. The whole idea behind the channel was to bring the passion of beer and the experience of beer and education of beer to people in a fun way. So uh-huh. beer reviews are one way to do it, but I also want to teach people about stuff. So the S the SRM video I had just done, just kind of explaining that because people hear that and they're not really sure what it is sometimes. One on the IBUs that I got upcoming for that channel as well. I know talking with Todd a few times, I've got things coming back, breaking down various hops for different types of brewing and stuff like that. And then the beer reviews will still be sprinkled in there and stuff. So I got all that stuff happening. So I took this week off kind of to look at replanting some guidelines. But away from that, you know, on YouTube, I also have a mile, a, a mile really just starting to be kind of a successful type uh, reaction channel. So I've been doing music reactions as well. Oh, so really? That has also been taking part in my time and I've been trying to tool that a little bit better. So that one, like, became i say it became uh popular quick but i I say popular but it's like you know the whole thing is the first hurdles that thousand right so that channel was over a thousand within like a month and a half two months time oh that's pretty good yeah so it was kind of i've been kind of doing that and i've been mixing in stuff when i can there too but i had to get a little bit more structure so i'm trying to get it to doing two videos a week over there and on the beer channel if I can get it down correctly, I'll do like three videos a week, Monday through Wednesday, and then do the live stream on Thursday. And I have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to prepare stuff for the upcoming weeks type thing. That's the plan. How it works in the real world, as you know, doesn't always go according to plan. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes it's tough to get off the drawing board, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've been I've been trying to work along doing that. Um, I've been trying to meet with other people and different breweries to get them on the channel on stuff as well. I've been invited about some different events that were taking place uh, right now. I'm also one of the things I'm doing. I'm one of the judges for the craft beer marketing awards that are taking place at the, uh, craft beer conference in Vegas in April. So I'm, I'm trying to get those out. They actually had me for two categories this year, which was great. I was one category last year, this year, they got me on two, one category being, best on location beer garden or brandon oh and, wow. then, yeah, and the other one being best social media use by a brewery so i've got like two different categories that i'm kind of going through judging right now which is a cool thing um to be able to provide that and you have you know some other people in the industry kind of looking at you being able to bring that expertise so you know you're kind of building all this stuff up and everything which has been That's awesome very nice. yeah That's yeah. Nice. yeah so trying to do all that still breweries around baltimore that i try to get out to see when i can it's just between that and really the day job because you got to pay the bills so the day <laughs> job to lock you down for a period of time um that's what that's what takes most of the stuff up right doing that so that's like the eight to five okay or not but what neck of the woods are you in now uh, i'm in baltimore now okay okay yeah I, yeah, I, yeah. I, when i met you, you were in in, in kentucky like, right right yeah, it's it's yeah cincinnati border kentucky. yeah yeah the missus took a job here just over a couple years ago so we moved to baltimore and originally, I'm from New Jersey, so. Oh, okay. I get, I get to see my mom. There's a couple hours away from here where she's yeah. in South Jersey, which I've been able to get into some of the Jersey breweries up there, which is pretty cool. So, I'm able to get into that scene and see what they're doing. And so, um, are, are you first online with the Jersey Johnny or or the Beer Samurai? Well, it's funny because you mentioned for me to check out their live stream things. So yeah, I checked it out yeah. last night, and I was actually talking to the guys. Okay, great, 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 oh, stuff. great, great show they got there. The log, the logger yeah. show. Johnny's starting Coastal Beer Works in Jersey. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we were talking about some of the spots up there that I had been to, and I told him, yeah, I was born in, born in South Jersey as well. We were kind of talking about the different areas, and they were pulling the comments and stuff up. And all three of them, they had three guys. I don't know if all three usually do it, but there were three guys that were doing it last night, and they were all pretty cool, so – yeah, yeah, those are they're, they're great guys, man. So I, yeah. I that's yeah, I was hoping you connect with them because yeah, I yeah. thanks it, for recommending them. Be a great guest on their show. Yeah, I was telling them like because one of my old classmates, I was telling him up there in Jersey, um, he's the one of the co-founder of Spellbound. Mm-hmm. So they actually are familiar with them and they were showing me some of the pictures when they were out spellbound and stuff too. So I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool there. Yeah, yeah. I said 
me and Scott, we went to school together. We were track teammates and classmates, everything like that. So that's awesome. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. So tell me, we talked about your whiskey. Have you drank any of that double IPA yet? Yeah. So I was, I'm curious about that one. I haven't had that one before. Yeah. So this one I had one time, a long time. It was, I think it was uh, Bowie, Maryland. I don't know if it was Bowie or Bowie, how they pronounce it. It's B-O-W-I-E. But anyway, I looked at my tap and I was like at a restaurant we were at. So I never really picked up a six pack or anything before, but it's very, uh, it's twelve percent ABV, so it's definitely got the alcohol coming through. Mm-hmm. It's got a, a syrupy body type presence to it. It's got um, definitely a little bit of heat in there. I'm nose getting wise, and malty. Yeah, malty nose wise. So you do get some of the residue of the hops. You do pick up kind of like that pine forest type feel, but the malts are right up there with it. And then when you get it on that palate, the body's got a nice little medium thick type body to it. Medium to full, I guess you can say. You get a little bit of that carbonation in play. Get a little bit of that tickling on the tongue. Oh, nice. But, but overall, it's pretty smooth. You can definitely tell it has weight, right? So, um, and the thing about this double IPA is not the, and we talked about this years ago, I know a few times and stuff. It's not the juice bombs, right? These are like the ah, ice double IPAs yeah. that are like you actually know you're drinking a beer. It's like you don't think you're that drinking juice with that big malt backbone, right? <laughs> and you so get kind of chew it a little bit, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a little bit of that leathery type appeal to it. Mm-hmm. So, and I enjoy that. I enjoy being able to get back to the type of styles along those lines where IPAs for me they can actually burn me out on them over a period of time. So like I tell people, if you look at my beer fridge, the least style I probably have in there, you would think is IPA. I have a few in there, but it's mainly stouts, porters, brown ales, some Schwartz beers, some Rouse beers, you know, but the IPAs are ones I can definitely get tired out on a little bit. And I got to, I got to reset myself. This is not like one like that. This is one that's like, okay, I can keep this one around. Now, mind you again, if you do pick up this 12%, so anybody watching, make sure you know your power <laughs> because these come in a six pack and a six pack will knock you down. So recently I got my wife a few months ago hooked on Golden Monkey. Uh-huh. She's like, these aren't like the other ones like before. Like, no, those are like 9.3 or higher because I got a different <laughs> versions of it. She, she was used to drinking some of the five or six percent type stuff. She's like, yeah, I feel a little different. <laughs> so I, I'm going back to your, your thoughts on IPAs, did, I mean, I, you say, you know, uh, don't they seem to get one note after a while? So, oh, great, I got tangerine and grapefruit. Oh, great, I got grapefruit and tangerine. Oh, great, I got pineapple and passion fruit. You know, yeah. you know okay, tropical fruit or citrus. Okay, great. That's what yeah. I you know, you kind of miss, I was, I was saying in a few episodes, I miss beers like that where they were just big, malty, and chewy, and the hops were the accent. They weren't the star of the show. Right, right. And that's what you're getting with this. And Pine Dog, you know, they to me, they still make some decent stuff out there. I feel like sometimes now they get overlooked with all the flash of some of the other type beers that are out there, you know, because everybody's chasing all the, the juice bombs or the the smooth, the smoothie sours, whatever it may be, and stuff. And flying dogs, like we're going to keep doing what we're kind of doing here. And I think they come up with some great stuff over the years. Yeah, they have. So, yeah. It's not, I used to be able to buy them all the time here, but over the last few years, the distribution has changed, and we've had gained access to other beers. It was like every time we gain access to one, we lose access to another. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then we're was, getting more local as well. I mean, Springfield isn't that big a town, and we've got 11 breweries now. And so one you, 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 years you, you ago, get, uh, 10 you, years ago, we had two. Wow, wow. Did you say you can get four loco there? Mm-hmm. Because I know some states you can't get Not four loco. Not but yeah, we can. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we used to get it in Kentucky. They couldn't get it in Ohio, so they used to come over there to kind of get it. And... uh my wife asked me about that the other day or whatever. I was like, no, they don't sell for local in Maryland that I've seen as of yet. So, yeah, it's funny how that works out. Well, I'm going to change gears on you a little bit. I'm going to step it up in the beer department mm-hmm. and take it down a notch in the whiskey department. <laughs> and again, here's the, 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 uh, 
The connection is, is uh, well, the connection is the brewery and the distillery. Is They're both mm-hmm. sister companies. In fact, they're both in, in the same building. I've got a product from Springfield Brewing Company, local to me. This is their old standard. Um, and there's a barley wine aged in port and sherry barrels. Ooh. And it's at 11%. Nice. And then my the oatmeal stat, I think I I didn't mention it. It's only a five, so it was a light beer, but the whiskey was heavy. Yeah. So now I'm gonna, but I'm gonna take it down a notch on the whiskey by using a, so Tiaki Da and Springfield Brewing Company are owned by the same people. They're sister companies. Oh yeah. There's a bourbon barrel that's finished in in port barrels, and it's at 92 proof. Oh, nice. It is just a gorgeous whiskey, man. It really is. So I'm gonna I do it with my glass here. So I, I'm one of those folks, and I think you probably are too. That if you have if you have the corresponding glass, you have to use it. My wife makes fun of me because I, I if I can't find the glass, I won't do the product. I have to have the glass. So <laughs> I've got the Kentucky Dog glass here. I got the spring filter. If I had, I don't necessarily have to have the glass for the brewery or the distillery, but if I have it, I have to use it. Yeah, that's what we call hashtag proper glassware. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the OCD gets the best of me sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That's just proper representation. That's right. I've tried to explain that to my wife, but she likes to make fun of me for it. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna put a nice pour in there. I thought about doing something crazy because that uh, that that beer is aged in port and sherry barrels. Yeah. This whiskey is aged in port barrels, but then there, they have another product right here called Wanderlust that's aged in sherry barrels. So I thought about mixing an ounce of each, but then I decided Ooh. against it. My mom. <laughs> Yeah, the purist in me wouldn't allow me to do that. <laughs> you mix a beer, but not whiskey. <laughs> yeah. and then I thought about, nah, Tom, that's just wrong. You can't do it. <laughs> so do you have a favorite for barreling? Do you have a favorite uh, you like you like as far as what beers are barreled in? Um, Other than your standard white oak. Right. So um, yeah, that's an interesting question. So uh, a lot of the, dis- the a lot of the distilleries here in the state, uh, or just outside the state, a lot of them will use Missouri white oak, and and I've noticed a difference. A lot of folks don't like Missouri white oak for different reasons, but what I've noticed is those that do, Missouri white oak offers more spice notes than other American white oak. So any if you ever get any Missouri whiskey. Aged in, in, in Missouri White Oak, you will notice that difference right on that back end. You will feel those spice notes in a great big way. But as far as uh, an additional barrels like the, the port or the sherry, do I have a particular mm-hmm. favorite? No, really. It, it just kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for, to be honest with you. I really like the port and sherry barrels, uh, especially when you're into those winter months, right? When you're really drinking whiskey for comfort, you know, you want that warm, uh, be- because I think you feel, you know, the port and the sherry, or I feel like are kind of fall winter, you know, cordials, right? Yeah. Well, you, you think you had like crack and sitting in front of a fireplace as a crack mm-hmm. when you're back and enjoying it. Yeah. And I love, I love the additional fruit notes that that port and or sherry barrels were used. But if I had to pick a favorite, I would probably say I prefer port slightly more over sherry, but I'm not turning down a sherry finished anything either. Uh, I've had, a, I've got another whiskey here from a Springfield Brewing Company uh, called Hinterland where that were finished in maple syrup barrels. And oh. because you get that, again, you get those white oak notes on top of those you know, maple syrup notes, and you just got a great quality whiskey. Ooh. Okay. Vanessa says I've been trying to get, trying to find uh, large planks of white oak, thick ones uh, to bench and at table bills. I want to post your comment there, Vanessa. Yeah, Vanessa's big into building a lot of things. So she likes, she's nice. building out a kegerator where she's going to just have dragon milk on tap in a keg. Oh. And she pulls out like, <laughs> That's about, milk, like, like carriers. That. Yeah, oh yeah, she does that. She has like a bench, a fire pit, all kinds of stuff. So Vanessa is like our like she's always she's been one of my 
favorite, you know, subscribers and stuff like that with the channel, been with us for a long time. And we all decided, like, if the world ever shit hits the fan, we all go to Vanessa's house because she's gonna she's automatically the leader. He's the Rick Grimes of the crew. So we're all you gonna have Vanessa's somebody house. you know is gonna take charge. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just like all you gotta do is make it to Vanessa's house up in up in Connecticut, and she'll make sure everything is all set going forward. So yeah, she's awesome. Well, I'm getting the comic relief. We yeah, you need somebody that can do things. And... Yeah, <laughs> I'm just prepared. I'm there to pair the beers for the meals. That's all I'm there for. <laughs> you know, I thought about getting a kegerator, and, and my wife reminded me that. I don't drink enough of one particular style. It would take me forever to get through one keg because I like to, you know, what I want changes per minute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would be the same way. I mean, you know, just getting through stuff right now that I have here. Is yeah, I, crazy. <laughs> I actually quit buying stuff. I had a two month period before. Uh, the end of the year, I quit buying stuff, and then uh, we went to Oklahoma, and I bought quite a bit. And it was just last weekend was the first time I bought beer in Missouri this year. Yeah, wow. Yeah, just took me forever to get through stuff. Well, it's like I try not to buy more, like we were talking about earlier. But it's kind of like I get out somewhere, and it's like I got to get it now because I it won't be here anymore. Like this is the only time you bring it out during the year or they're not going to be bringing it back or it's a special anniversary type thing. You know, it's always <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and see, I've got a friend that's got a keg raider invites us over all the time. And, but he's even said the same thing, even having a lot of company, sometimes it's tough to eliminate certain kegs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You get something over because it sounds good. You know, you like the beer, but then after, you know, after a couple weekends, you're ready for something else, and you still got a two or three more weekends of that keg left. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, something sounds good at that moment, but now that moment is past. Oh, <laughs> mm. uh, that that uh, wow! Maybe I'm thinking a little bit of eucalyptus or something with this one, with this whiskey. I'm trying to just think of all the flavors I'm getting with it. It's damn good, though. I'll tell you that. And not, I mean, you get heat, but it's not overly hot. So it just, it's so smooth. Nice. Yeah, it's only a Wednesday night, and I got a drink again tomorrow. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> 35% <laughs> whiskey. Yeah, so I, I go on my IPA. Yeah. I, I drink That's tonight. Ridiculous. I drink tonight, then I, I I work Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, so I won't drink again till Sunday. <laughs> well, it's like concept sessionable. Like none of my beer, like none of the beers we ever have are like usually lower type beer. Occasionally we'll have some stuff out there, and sometimes I'll throw a macro or something like that up there. But most of the time, I'm drinking double digit ABV beers for a lot of it. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I tend to again through those last few months of the year. Yeah, going into then. January, February, March. Now, I'll, now I'll start getting back to you know uh, the five six percent pilsners. And... <laughs> yeah, even then, like I got like a, I've seen like imperial pilsners. Like even my local corner store has one. I, I did a review. I think it was Obl Oblivon or something. It was out of the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. you, Ukraine. They drink in Ukraine. I see some of the Ukrainian beers, and they do put some beers down with high ABV. And it was like. Nine point nine percent imperial pills are like who makes an imperial oh, pilsner? Oh, oh Ukrainians do. That's who makes imperial pilsners. <laughs> so the brewery I work for does a great imperial pilsner, but it, it's at seven eight, so it's not. Yeah. It's big, but it's big for a pilsner, but it's not huge. But even at seven eight, it'll it'll put a hurt on you. Yeah, yeah, because you know pilsners like you know crisp, easy drinking are supposed to be. So you'll get into having a few of them, but like you stand up. Well, that's kind of the problem with that beer. It is crisp, but it is easy to drink, but it's 7, 8. And you don't really feel that until, you know, you try to get up. But yeah, yeah. Man, there was so like The Take some dragon milk staffs. We will sit on the bench, swings around the fire pit until we finish them. There we yeah. go. Yeah, I would be all for that for sure. Oh, mercy. Let me work on this bourbon a little bit. Uh, 
I, did you do a sports show at one time, Rod, or am I imagining things? I thought you did a sports thing at one time. Um, I think we probably talked about we did a beer maybe around sports or something. Oh, we were be, talking sports maybe along those lines and stuff. Uh, I actually thought the other day about doing a March Madness with beers mm-hmm. to try to do a show around that, but I'm like, that would be so long of time because you have to go through the beers and <laughs> talk about the beers and people can vote on the beer. I'm like. I mean, that's just nobody has time for all of that to do. So, but um, I said, maybe come up with a chart and put it like on Facebook or something like that and everything. Here's your top 64 beers to pair them up and see what people choose to go through. Wow, right. that's wild. But, yeah. yeah. But yeah. But I have one, talking about Imperial Pilsner. So, what I have was one called Crazy Brewski. Crazy so, Brewski. Okay. This was out of Lithuania. Oh, oh, I think I've had that one before. I actually showed the label. Uh, let me see here. Let me pull it up here. Because those Lithuania beers will kill you. Yeah, I've had that one. Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen percent ABV. Oh yeah, you yeah. Little yeah, pills are fifteen percent, and it's <laughs> god awful too. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I guess you can't put in a strong ale. It's a lager, so you can't put it it'll, in that category. It'll burn <laughs> all the way down and all the way out. <laughs> Some Lithuanian open air in your chest. Oh, yeah. They, 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 they're not playing, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rod says, hey, Rod, my home country. Or Crunch says. Uh, yeah, you know, Lithuania. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We'll put that out. I mean, you ain't messing around with that beer for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there was another one I got from there, too. But I was like, you know what? Because it was like. I think it was like a 22 ounce. No, it was like a 16, maybe 16, nine or a little bit bigger than usual, but it was like five dollars on that and everything. You know, I said, like, you know what? I'll, I'll give that a try. You know, it's like, see what happens. <laughs> I actually did finish it though, too. And, you know, it was definitely one of those ones like back in the day, like we were in high school. We used to, when we could first, well, we weren't legally able to drink, but we would first get our first alcoholic drinks. You know, you were getting kind of like some of the 40s and all that kind of stuff. Like, that would have been one to get. Like, <laughs> put that in a brown yeah. bag. Yeah. Well, when it was just about getting drunk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what we would do is we would get, of course, they didn't sell them in 40s back then. They were quart. So we oh, yeah. we buy a quart of either Schlitz Malt Liquor or Old English. And then uh-huh. buy a bottle of uh, Boone's Farm, either Wild Mountain or Strawberry Hill. And then we, you know, then I shit you not, here's where it gets ugly. We would chug, I mean, chug that entire bottle of wine. Just chug it or, or, or chug the beer, one or the other, and then drink the other one. Uh, yeah, that's how stupid we were. <laughs> well, we, we were talking about that, I think it was like last week on the show, we were talking about going through some stuff, but, you know, we've all, kind of had i mean depending where you were out of the kids nowadays do it as much as we did back then but as we found ourselves in our teen years becoming adults go ahead. Through the, wild, the wild irish rose phase the mad dog phase oh the, the mad dog, dog phase so did yeah. you have ripple? <laughs> did I do what ripple never had the ripple always knew the ripple. never had that one yeah had thunderbird the thunderbird well, we have to uh, yeah, thunderbird yeah you had to do the ripple because you know fred sanford drank yeah. the ripple <laughs> Boy, that stuff was god awful too, man. <laughs> we had the blue bull, we had the blue bull from Swiss and the red bull from Swiss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and then Cold 45 and the old English. Cold 45, and, yeah, of course you had the Cold 45 commercials back then. Yeah, yeah. Which actually back then was sophisticated with Billy D, right? You felt what? like oh, it was Billy D. Yeah. Okay for Billy D, then it must be okay. <laughs> Billy D is the epitome of cool. Yeah. That's Lando Carissian right there. It's got to be okay, right? Yeah. Cool, wasn't he? Hell, if he's drinking that shit. <laughs> well, that Schlitz small liquor, though, man. Oh, that, that will that would put a hurt on you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I knew the hang the, the no, I really hang grenade. Now, but I actually preferred Old English Lay Hundred back then. I would drink that by the gallon. Yeah, that was, a, that was at a, a certain hit. age. Let's just say. Yeah. Yeah, I think once we discovered like the Mad Dog and the Water Shows, we did that for a bit. You were young and dumb and didn't realize anything different. Like, 
<laughs> we, actually, we actually did a live stream um was todd's probably laughing we did a live stream on malt liquor last year oh god and, and shannon was like i wonder if mad dog still tastes the same as they used to when i was younger right so we had we had to go and get some mad dog to do on the show with us she took <laughs> one sip and she was like so how bad nope. was it <laughs> oh it was terrible she never went back to the bottle after that one sip and the bottle got oh bad. man <laughs> But now they got it all redesigned. They got a little looking all fancy for like a lot of these younger generation that are trying yep, it. They're yep. making it taste like Kool Aid now, I guess. So. Well, that's why we all drink Boone's Farm back in the day because that's what it tastes like—the Wild Mountain Grape and the Strawberry Hill. I mean, tastes yeah. like Kool Aid. But we had Bartles and James back then too. They got Bartles, well, that was yeah, that was the Boone's yeah. Farm was before the Bartles and James. But yeah, well, I grew up in Southern California, so before Bartles and James, we had the California Coolers were first. Mm-hmm. And then the Bartles and James came out. Yeah. I used to drink those. Uh, well, I started drinking the California coolers, uh, but they gave me heartburn like nobody's business because all that citrus would just, you know. Yeah. And my stomach yeah, was, was already it. shot before I was 21 anyway. <laughs> from drinking about a 12-pack of Coke a day, but that's a story for another day. Well, for many a year back when I was in college, it was about me and Southern Comfort. I, lo I love some Southern Ooh. Comfort back then. Just it was real sweet, huh? Yeah, just Southern Comfort and, and something. I do Alabama Slammers. I, I was just going to say, have you ever had an Alabama Slammer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody introduced me to an Alabama Slammer when I was twenty-one. I went through a phase where I just, I would, I would, uh, whenever I was invited anywhere, I'd buy all the ingredients for an Alabama Slammer, bring it there, and everybody was hooked. Yeah, was, yeah. It was, it was like the alcohol version of Coke or, or crack back then, yeah. Because <laughs> what you had in Alabama Slammer, you're going, oh, my God, that's delicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. Back then, we were, doing, we, were, we were doing Alabama Slammers. Back in my, I would say, my high school to college years, Alabama Slammers was a popular shot. Yeah. Upward drink was Sex on the Beach. And also, we were there when they started bringing out Lynchburg lemonade for the first time. When Jack Daniels, oh, yeah, came up do remember one. that too? Yeah, that was, that was pretty popular. And of course, Long Island iced tea. If you're that age, anytime, you're like, I get, I get four liquors. I get four liquors in one. I'll take that drink, sir. <laughs> and then when you get old, you realize, you know, the, the Long Island iced teas are giving you bottom shelf liquor and charging you top shelf price. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're getting rid of the worst liquor they have and, and selling it to you at a high price. <laughs> what well, a thing now is, if you ever notice going to place like Long Island Iced Tea, it's not made the same as it was back then. Because it used to be your four liquors, mm -hmm. and you had your sours, and you had your um, splash of Coke that would go into splash it. Splash of Coke, yeah. Now it's three liquors they're using. A lot of times tequila gets left out of it. So it's not even a full what, what, what thing. Left out? Tequila? Tequila is usually the one that's left out in a lot of places. So it's you like had the to the, the, you had to have a shot of the four liquors. You had to have a shot of the sour mix and then a splash of Coke. Right, right. And then like a lime for a garnish, I think we did. Mm -hmm. back then. But yeah. Um, but yeah, but now it's like when I, when I used to bartend in the 90s, like we'd all have different drinks we'd all make at the bar that were kind of our spell, like Long Island iced tea and Lisburg lemonades were two of the ones I would usually make a lot of for people. Someone else will make like a Manhattan um, or like the, um, uh, what's the other one with bourbon? Um, old fashioned. Mind, right? Like old fashioned. Like yeah. everybody would have like different ones that were kind of become like their drinks. Like, oh, you want to go see Rod to get that one? Or you want to go see... BT yeah, that, yeah. You, know, you want to go see like we just you know it, it made it kind of nice to do it that way. So, but yeah, this was a bartending was a fun a fun gig for sure. It's funny we used to bartend, and this was like for the university, so we were at the alumni center doing a lot of functions, and professors would come in and it'd be usually like, oh, just give me a scotch of water, blah, blah, blah. come on, can we spice it up? Do the thing. No, 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 I don't change like another old professor. <laughs> but we would do comedy clubs and we would do stuff like that and weddings, all that kind of stuff. For some reason, whenever we did weddings, people would always come in and try to out drink us at the like they would try to out drink the bartender. It's like, you know how high our tolerance is? Our tolerance is so high. <laughs> like, like if you want to go for it, let's go for it. You know, <laughs> we'd be sitting there doing drinks with them and stuff like that too. So um, crazy. Yeah, the purple passion. Yeah. Yeah. Was it was years later that you found out a mad MD didn't mean mad dog it was actually 
what Morgan Dumont with the name of the yeah yeah uh, yeah it was like it's not Mad Dog I thought that was Mad Dog Mad Dog twenty twenty baby uh, yeah. Hey, you know, the funny oh, thing Morgan is, David. Like, Morgan David, yeah. yeah Morgan David. I, Morgan David. I, I've done things kind of backwards. I waited till my late fifties to become a bartender. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, though, either. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I've kind of been backwards, but yeah. Tom it, Collins is one of my. It's enjoyable though. Like they've, they've got me where I'm working now. They've got me uh, actually just designing uh, cocktails per season. So. Oh, nice. That, nice. That's, I got to design the cocktail we sold for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Now, do you ever do any beer cocktails as well? Or are you just doing straight cocktails using the spirit? Yeah. Uh, so that's something I'm working on as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. nice. Beer cocktails becoming a thing, I guess. So I don't know that yeah. I'm a huge fan of the beer cocktail, but, but I'm not opposed to it either. No. It had, a, it had a run when I was in Cincinnati. It had a run probably about. 10 to 15 years ago where people were doing it and then it kind of fell out like people were just kind of yeah. like not into it as much anymore but i see spots now where it's coming back again is it so way I, like I back, back in the early 90s i saw breweries close if they didn't open five years later they'd have been set so right I mean, they, they've changed the liquor laws in my neck of the woods so a lot of the smaller breweries including the one i work for have started doing cocktails and added whiskey so you're starting to see a lot of those beer cocktails come back because of you know they, they've added the whiskey to the breweries yeah yeah so i mean it's a, definitely an opportunity there to be able to kind of do some stuff like that oh whatever obs net said what about the saint ides 40. You know, I've I've never did St. Ives. I was already past that point, like when, like when St. Ives came out, or was kind of getting marketed. I would say it was probably ninety four, ninety five, somewhere in that area, ninety three. I know Ice Cube was really big with the St. Ives. I was already like off into being an adult adulthood, right? So I was starting to real job, and like I can't go back and like get the forties anymore. So I missed that by a few years, but uh, yeah. But I remember the popularity of that. Like, still reserve is popular now for a lot of people too. That's another one that's out there now. Oh and God! Just, I that I've reserve two drinks too. Yeah. I don't think I've drank that in at least two days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that stuff was that stuff was horrendous, is it not? <laughs> yeah. Drink it cold and drink it fast, and then well, go to that's sleep. It. You have to drink it real fast. You're just going to taste nothing but corn syrup. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's horrible, man. Yeah, you got to know those. Are, there, there are certain beers that were just made to shotgun. You, yeah. you have to get them almost frozen and then shotgun them. Yeah, yeah. And of just, course, when you get that cold beer on the back of your throat, that's a little painful. But you got to work through the pain, man. You got to <laughs> play through the pain, baby. <laughs> that, that's part of the game. It's like telling craft drinkers, like you don't want a frosted mug, and they're always like frosted mugs. Like no, it was frosted if you're getting like Budweiser or something. You know, well, you, you, know, want that, you don't want that warming up on you, but I used to have those plastic mugs with the lining that you freeze them. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the liquid in the lining and you freeze them so that you poured the beer in and it just be became like a slushy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to do that with craft beer, though. But no, no, I'm glad my palate kind of has got beyond that. But yeah, <laughs> that's what we used to do. Yeah, <laughs> you, had to, you had to have it really cold. Because the yeah. beer was terrible if it wasn't. It's like it's like we were talking about weeks back, and when everybody's kind of going through January, months back, even like how it's changed from the non-alcoholic game list. You're like me growing up. When they said when you think <laughs> non-alcoholic, you think of duels or sharps off the bat, right? And it's all different yeah, now. Yeah. You actually get you have good non-alcoholic beer out there, which is great, mm -hmm. you know. So. Yeah, there is. Uh, you know, uh, you, the, the funny thing is, well, not funny, but the, it, it, it is just, it's it's very hard, very expensive to brew a non-alcoholic beer for small small breweries. It really is yeah. tough. Yeah. It's not an easy process. A lot of them just say it's just not cost effective for them. Uh, yeah. so, again, a lot of breweries in this neck of the woods are looking at just doing maybe a lower ABV beer, something right at, hovering about 3%. Yeah. Like an actual session ale, not like when we yeah, say you, session, you, it's like five percent. <laughs> you know, you come in after mowing the yards, I mean, you can just pound quickly or, or go into your local brewery and knock two or three back and not worry about it too much. Yeah. 
Oh, it is that time of year when we start getting the lawnmower beers coming out pretty soon too. So yeah, you know it's funny. I, I love I love uh, barley wines. I love anything chucked in a bourbon barrel. I'm I'm a big fan. But as the weather gets warmer, I'm looking forward to the the new crop of pilsners and fresh hop pilsners and Czech pilsners. I mean, I I love those beers. Yeah, yeah. But it, then again, when, when it comes to fall, I'm ready for everything to be chucked in a barrel again. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be a big ale guy. Uh, I'm still pretty much more ale than lager, but I've, over the years, I've become more enjoyable of a lot of the lagers because of the different mm -hmm. styles and stuff. So, um, well, I've never understood the folks that say I don't like lagers because it just encompasses so many beers, right? I think yeah. usually when somebody says I don't like lagers, they mean they don't like the domestic lagers. But when you're talking about a lager, a lot of people don't realize that a Doppelbach at 8% is a lager. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, like that, you, know. It, you know, you got a Schwartz beer, you've got, you know, you've got a Dunkel, you got a Dunkel Vice. There are so many great styles that to eliminate everything that's a lager just seems ridiculous. Yeah, it is. And I think that's part of it. Part of it is, I don't think the beer industry did enough to actually educate the public to be aware well, of the other styles too. that are out there. And then the, most of the times growing up, like we're talking about non alcoholic beer, we grew up thinking lager. We were thinking Bud or Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They all that they all have their spot in their position for what they're doing. But it's kind of like, yeah, when you get like a Roush beer, you're getting a lager. You get a Keller beer, you're getting a lager. Mm -hmm. you get a beer. Yeah. So it's it's fun to actually open up the door and start experimenting. And it's more like, okay, I'm not a huge fan of adjunct lagers, but mm -hmm. these other there, lager yeah. styles, you start to expand as you actually go. And that's where... I'm saying, how do you not love a Doppelbach? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a lager. <laughs> yeah, you got you to enjoy it, right? Like, Cincinnati has a box <laughs> fest every year. Yeah, do, yeah I agree. They, they do a box fest every year, and people just come out there, and that's all they're drinking is box, and they have some great box. They actually <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got one of the box. And you get to pet goats. <laughs> oh, man. Central Brewing does a nice one. They, 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 they keep it down to 7, 8, but it, it's a good beer, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the fun thing about beer is really the exploration and the different things you can get into. And like I said, you know, one of my things with beer, I've always, it's people, if you don't realize it, it's kind of like you can go back and you can see like beer is like that centerpiece liquid that i feel like is like been around forever like obviously we could say well records go 5000 bc mesopotamia blah 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 but it's kind of like you think about some of the things that were probably decided over a beer like beer was like one of those type of things you know where it's just uh -huh. like around as people had to discuss because you you can't really get too deep into wine you can't really get too deep into spirits but you have a nice little beer you could actually have a discussion. You can like get stuff done and you relax as you have that little bit of a beer. What's up, Foamy? Cheers, my friend. So, so Pilgrim today called Crispy Boy. I just like that saying. I could not agree more. Foamy. I could not agree more. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where that came out from now. But yeah, I really hate thing. that. I really do. Yeah. Crispy Boy. I guess it's uh, probably the Hayes Boy came out. As oh, I know. Those, yeah, those yeah. folks. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was joking. It's been quite a while back now, but I was joking with my wife, and I said, "I'm entering my curmudgeon phase," and she says, "Entering." <laughs> you sound like and my so, wife. <laughs> so, so, no, I'm I'm embracing my curmudgeon nature at this point. So the funny thing is, is that at work, I'm allowed to get away with things that others might not be able to because of the the curmudgeon, right? Oh, yeah. because an older guy can say things, right? Yeah. And I've learned that if you say say things with a smile and a chuckle, you can get away with things that somebody else can't say. Yeah, they can be smiling and chuckle a little, <laughs> and you can get away with some stuff. <laughs> you know, are you really that stupid? <laughs> it's hard to come back from that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's funny. <laughs> Some of the some of the places oh, Tom, we, he's a card. <laughs> some of the places we've been to is kind of like you'll see stuff and it's kind of like my wife will see it coming and it's kind of like that that Clint Eastwood like old man type thing about to come out. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, don't, yeah. she's like, Don't say anything, don't say anything. It's like, well, you know they're pouring the wrong way, or they're doing this the wrong way. <laughs> <She knows. laughs> 
<laughs> I, I like, went on about a, it's been a while back now, but I went on about a 10 minute, maybe even 15 minute tirade a while back on a TV show. A guy was a bar owner and supposedly an expert on cocktails, and he made a Manhattan and dropped a bright red cherry in it. A bright red maraschino. Bar cherry. Rescue? Was this on Bar Rescue? Oh my God! I, I just about freaking no. It was it was just a, a show. Okay. You know, was, bar Rescue is a show. I thought I saw something. You know, it went on about what an expert he was about a cocktail. It's a, an expert in a in a in a cocktail would never put a bright red cherry in a Manhattan. And I I did about at least ten minutes, if not more, on it. He says, "Let it go. Let it." It's just a TV show. I said, "Yeah, but they need to hire. They, they hire medical experts for TV shows. They hire gun experts. They need to hire cock. They need to hire whiskey experts. You know, alcohol experts." They need a bartender on that scene. Obviously, somebody needs to tell these people how things are done. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you ever watch Bar Rescue, sadly, some people actually do work in it, do the same damn thing. <laughs> like you're a professional. Crazy, it? Oh my God, how could you do that? <laughs> if I was ever when I ran a bar and I see him do things like that, I say, oh my God, I'm, I'm just, I'm out. I'm done. Yeah. It's like, you it's see over. Some people. They can't make a margarita. Like, how do you not make a margarita? It's the most popular drink in the country. Yeah. <laughs> there is a place in St. Louis, though. There, it's a hotel in St. Louis called the Moonrise, and they do a month-old Manhattan that is just insane. Mm. It just sits in a barrel. They do do a year old too, which is crazy good. But that month old is is just oh, amazing. Mm. So cocktails, we talked about whiskey, we talked about beer, but are, are you a fan of cocktails at all? I do, I do cocktails from time to time. It's funny, back in the, uh, one of my reasons for not getting into craft beer no later on was back in the 90s, when I was bartending for a bit, I drank more cocktails than I actually did beer. So I would drink a lot of that kind of stuff, a lot of the spirits and liquors. And Hey, Shane, the, this, he says, good evening, gentlemen. Cheers, you know, Shane. Who, who's he talking to? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Must be looking at somebody else while he's listening to us. I don't know. <laughs> you do have it confused with two other fellows, Shane. Uh, if only good, back, I mean, I myself, but I thought I should use the word hate. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably not. Sometimes, again, sometimes I just can't. So I have no filter, a uh, foamy. I've, I've already said something before I realized I probably shouldn't have said it, which is why I'm, I don't get invited to a lot of places. <laughs> Well, he's a good guy. Um, but yeah, back in the 90s, I used to do more cocktails. So, I mean, I used to be a big fan of, like Cape Cod's, cranberry vodkas, and I would drink gotcha. screwdrivers and, like I said, Alabama Slam, Southern Comfort. I would actually drink with various things. And, um, and beers back then, it was just like, it was like, you know, but, but ice, red dog. Oh, yeah, we were, Red Dog. We we're like Bud Dry when Bud Dry was out. Remember the and... sayings on the Red Dog caps? They had those little sayings on the caps. When you flip it over, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I think a lot of Red Dog. Yeah. I mean, we were, in, and we were in West Virginia when I was going to school there. So we get stuff out of Pittsburgh because Morgantown was like seven miles short of there. So it was like Rolling Rock, you would see. We would get the gangling. We would get some of the other stuff like that. But it's... Yeah, I would drink more of this stuff like that. I was never a huge Bloody Mary fan until later in life. I actually can drink a Bloody Mary now, but back then I was not a big fan of Bloody Mary. So, but yeah, I'll do cocktails once in a while. Tequila Sunrise is one of my favorite cocktails to enjoy. So I that's one that of my today. mother's favorite. You know, after after fifty, I've become kind of a purist. I really love the Manhattan. Uh, I hated the old fashioned for a long time until I started making them myself. Every time I had one in a bar, it was just too sweet. But now that I can make it myself, so I and now I can go somewhere else and say, okay, I will have an old fashioned, but cut the sugar in half. Yeah, give me the sugar or half the simple syrup, whatever you're using, cut it in half, and we'll be fine. Yeah, I'll do it old I'll do some of the, I actually one of the restaurants we went to here in Baltimore um a few weeks ago. I had a blackberry old fashioned, which was pretty Oh, good. that sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have some different ones. <laughs> we went to one place. The restaurant's actually closed now, which I think was because their service was so slow or whatever. But like we went there and it was just like you go to a place sometimes and it's just like you're looking around like anybody can come check on us, anybody can come get our order. Like it's just like it was taking forever to get our food and stuff. But the food was good. <laughs> It just took forever. 
And, you know, you, when you get the food, you're like, oh, yeah, that's what I ordered. I forgot what I ordered because it was so long. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Yeah. But Shane's the, me this. dry is the beer that made him fall in love with beer. Yeah. Uh, no, damn, Shane, really? really? Dry. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that beer, though. And I have to admit, I drank a lot of it when it came out. I really did. Well, you remember their slogan, don't ask why, drink Bud Dry. Well, I remember yeah. Mick Dry, Mick Dry. Mick, yeah. Everybody had a dry back then for yeah. about a year and a half, and then they were gone. But one of the places we went to, they, they brought me this drink, and it was called The Godfather. Um, and they come out with this drink in this restaurant, and the restaurant was kind of like this. It was kind of more bougie than it should. It shouldn't have been bougie at all, but it was kind of a bougie type thing that they were doing. Mm -hmm. and it comes out in this little um, case where it's like this block. And there's smoke. It's all smoke on it. Like, like, oh, what is this? Like a magic trick or whatever like that? It'll open up and you get you reach in and grab your drink. And, <laughs> and it's just like it was tasty and all, but I'm like, okay, uh, I guess I'm paying I'm paying up because of the show, I guess. So <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but ice killed the bud dry. Yeah. I, I think I used to drink bud ice, I used to drink bud dry. I had no problem really with bud dry as much. Um, I drank Bud Ice because it was a higher ABV. So I think Bud yeah, Ice I, everybody drank Ice because it was yeah. a higher ABV. Anything Ice, yeah. yeah. Ice House. Anything with Ice and it had a higher ABV. But it's funny, just recently, a couple weeks ago, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I actually did a review on Miller Genuine Draft because one of my local bars here, local corner store, had Miller oh, wow. Genuine Draft. And I was like, I wonder if it's like what I used to drink back in the 90s. And I actually did the review and Actually, it was pretty much like the same type thing. Was it going to be a great beer, but it wasn't terrible. And it was like, you know what? I could drink a few of these from time to time just to kick back and save a few bucks if I want to or whatever and be just fine. <laughs> just drink it while it's cold. Don't don't wait on to warm up. No, I mean, sure. you, know, you really got to drink it while it's very cold. Yeah, you got to you want that thing right at ice crystals. I remember when they did MGD light. You remember when they did MGD? Light? Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. That was like, oh, why? Why would you do this? Like, yeah, yeah. As long as they don't bring Zima back for a third time. Well, I think it was yeah. in the nineties. Might have been the early two thousands. Somewhere in the late nineties, early two thousands. Miller actually did an all malt beer, but it lasted for like a minute and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was here when it was gone. I don't even know that it got to all parts of the country. It just didn't work. <laughs> So I just said, stop it. Just shut down all shipments right now. <laughs> I, I know Barge. It actually had promo shots and, and coasters, but never actually got the beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, what... Brad, I want to thank you for joining me at the pub. Any any yeah. last words, parting shots? No, it was great to catch up. It's been a while since we had something where we've done some stuff together. So great to it... see you're still doing it. Like I said, when I first got on YouTube, you were one of the OGs that were out there telling the stories and sharing the beer. And I still remember your old thing. Like you talk about Michael Jackson, and you'd be like, not the singer, because people would be confused when you said Michael Jackson. They didn't know Michael Jackson, the beer writer, right? So, um, and it's funny, I just did a nine year anniversary show on the channel. And it was kind of interesting, just like talking about, like, I've seen so many people come and go in the beer community. Mm -hmm. Some that are still here, some that aren't here anymore. Some that just called it quits before they could have had success because they had some great channel. And it's just you know, when I've started this back in 2015, didn't know I'd be here nine years later, still doing. Didn't know what I was really shooting for. It was my wife's idea to even do it in the first place, and she was like, "You know beer, you like beer, go tell people about beer." And I was like, "Who the hell wants to watch a guy drink beer on YouTube?" <laughs> And then, <laughs> who knew yeah yeah like 2200 people later pretty much people still like to watch me talk about drinking beer so i appreciate well, all my subscribers i think a lot of those folks that are coming gone jumped in because they thought it was trendy at the time and, and the folks that are still remaining like yourself and myself and a handful of others we're here because of the love of the beer to start with everything else was secondary yeah. you know if, if you were here because of the trend and you thought you could make money right away th those folks are gone yeah. The, the folks that are here for the love of the beer, the whiskey, or whatever, the, you know, we're all still here. Yeah, and I, and I think a lot of people thought it was an easy thing to jump on and kind of do this and realize working doing YouTube is not an easy type thing, depending on what you want to do. Yeah, and, you know, and I mentioned like you and Michael Jackson with the line you said was great. Was just like I told people when I did the show last week. It's kind of like one of the things I get out of it is, is a passion for it. But at the same point, I think people like to watch the channel. Cause I put the time in actually research stuff. There are some channels that are just a guy drinking beer basically. Right. But you, if you're going to do it, you know, you want to 
be able to bring something that makes yourself different. And I love reading about beer, learning about beer, talking to people about beer, and that's what I bring to the channel. So well, you have to have your you have to have your niche, and then yeah. you have to be authentic. And I think folks yeah. can figure out if you're not authentic or not. Right, and, right. and and my my well, the positive and the and my downfall is the same thing is that I am authentic. So people either love me for that or hate me for that. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? You got to do what you can do and just keep doing it. I think if you keep telling your story and you keep being you, people come around and people still show you the love. So. I'm thankful well, to everybody. Ability that. Not to say certain things, I probably would. I just don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> filter, man. And so, so I've learned to embrace the fact that okay, I'm going to piss people off from time to time, and that's just the way it's going to be. But hey, Ron, yeah. hey, thanks for joining me here at the pub, man. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. Great time. Well, really and, uh, you, you are, you are a very knowledgeable guy. There's no doubt about that. You've got a great personality, so there's no wonder why you're doing well uh, uh, on this format. So I hope you keep going and keep doing what you do and keep expanding what you do because I, I, I do watch your program. So, well, I definitely appreciate that. Is, is the wife around? She is. She's always in the other. Well, she's always in the room with me, being quiet and shaking her head when I say something. But tell her to listen because I'll give her. You'll never find. A love like mine. Because I used to work for you, right? For Lou Rawls. I used to, I used to hook you up Rawls, back in the day. Yeah, Rawls, yeah. You know, <laughs> I used to be like, do Lou, Lou Rawls. She's getting, yeah. she's yeah, kind of liking that over there. That very white going in here. No, Lou Rawls had that voice, did he? <laughs> you know, so, uh, what, what commercials did he do? Was it Bud Light or was it... Was it uh... Lou <sighs> Rawls did yeah, you, I can't remember if it was Bud Light or if it was, uh, it was uh, the Anheuser Busch Light. But he used to do the, the beer commercials, and I can't remember which one. Oh, he's probably using that song, but that song got him a lot. It was. It, it, the song was in there. Oh, gosh, where's my thing here? Let me look it up real fast. Driving me crazy now. No, I got that song stuck in my head too. <laughs> yes, find it anyways, uh, anyways, hey, thanks, man. I appreciate you joining me. Oh, Patrick, I left a message here. I'm going to post it real oh, quick. Budweiser commercial, 1978, Lou Rawls. Oh, there it is. You found it. Any, any did life but, okay. right too. I couldn't remember if it was Bud or yeah, yeah. With a Patrick, well, man, hey, thanks for joining. Hey, don't jump off right okay. away. I want to talk to you just okay. briefly afterwards. Uh, I want to thank my my guest joining me at the pub, uh, Rod J from Rod J's Beer Ventures and other programs. I am Tom the Beer Whisperer, uh, Whiskey Whisperer, Beer Evangelist, Prolific Beer Drinker, Purveyor Wisdom, and all around good guy, Slotcher. <laughs>